Hey guys, Thunder E here, and today we're talking about the PlayStation Portal. Seriously, guys, I thought this was going to be a completely useless device, but my thoughts are changing, and they're changing really fast because it's very interesting when you compare it to your smartphone and how it actually differs and how it actually succeeds. But anyway, if you join us for the very first time, go ahead and smash that subscribe button notification icon to get notified with more videos like this. So let's talk the PlayStation Portal. When it was first announced, I said, who's gonna buy this? This makes no sense. I mean, I was gonna buy it because I'm gonna cover it, but who would actually buy this and who is this for? Now, I've had a couple of people say, and a couple of my friends say, this is for the diehard PlayStation fans. And yes, that may be true, but I don't think that's the exact market the portal is for. When you think about what the portal does, it's a remote play device that you can use only within your house. Now, a lot of people will say, well, there's a PlayStation um, app, which means you can remote play on that app, and which means I can use it on my smartphone, like I have here. Uh, with a backbone controller, or I can use it on my iPad with, uh, of course, a PlayStation controller as well, and I'm good to go. And that may be the case, but a portal does something completely different. It basically frees up those devices for you, plus it also gives you something that's truly PlayStation. When you look at the hardware, you've got a massive eight inch display that's absolutely lovely on any angle, any way you look at it. It's 1080p, it's only 60 hertz, but when you're playing, it feels really good. Now, that's because, of course, you're basically streaming directly from your PlayStation. And it's a one-to-one -one, uh, connection, so it feels very responsive and it's direct. Now, you've also got this design that has split controllers on either side. So when you look in the controllers, you're going, okay, it's like they slapped a, a screen in between co two controllers, but it still feel, feels comfortable. It feels like a PlayStation control setup. The bottom layouts are such. The only differences, of course, is your PlayStation buttons on the left. There's a mic mute button on the right. And then on the top side of the whole setup, you've got your volume rocker, power button, and your link button. That's it, right? So triggers, normal. Your controls feel very PlayStation-like. And I think a lot of people will enjoy that with the portal. As a, compared to something like my uh, Backbone, which feels really good. And it's good when I'm playing mobile games. But if I'm playing really or I'm getting into a whole session of gaming, uh, you know, on my PlayStation or playing something long as like my Spider-Man games or my God of War, then it doesn't feel as good. Or even things like Street Fighter where, yes, you definitely need better control setup for that. So there's that as well. Now, the other question you're going to ask is, hey, Thunder E, with my smartphone, I already have a smartphone. I don't have to spend $199 for the portal, that's the price of the portal. I already have a smartphone, I already have an iPad, or oh, I could go buy that. Now, if you already have it, then it makes sense for you not to purchase. But if you don't, then this might be a different option where it gives you more flexibility because you can move around the house with a dedicated device, you can be in the bathroom to game, you can be in, on your bed, you can be on the couch, you can be wherever, and you can use this device. Now, when it comes to audio on here, that's the biggest downside. I'm gonna put it out there first because you don't have Bluetooth connectivity on here and you must use the PlayStation um, PS Link headset. So that's something, it's a bit annoying, actually it's really annoying because I can't use like my Razer Hammerhead with this. I have to actually use it directly on my PlayStation. So again, once you go out of range, you might have limitations there, at least I did in this situation. Now the control setup in terms of the menu is simple and straightforward. You can link to any of your PlayStations if you have multiple PlayStation 5s and this is for the PlayStation 5. So strictly for your console. So what is the setup and what does it mean to actually use something like the portal? It means that the best case scenario of what this actually works is say for instance, you know, a family, you've got kids, you've got one TV, you've got your PlayStation, but Everybody wants to watch something else and you just want to game. So the kids want to watch their shows, the, the, the missus wants to watch her show or just watch the news. You can have the news on your main TV set. You can also have um, you know, the kids shows on your iPad or even your smartphone. And then you can take your portal and you can game. And I think that's one of the key scenarios 
this is for. Because think about it, the loyal PlayStation, the PlayStation loyalists started with the PS1 is in their 40s and, and they have kids and they're in that age range and they're diehard and they will get the portal. So it makes sense business-wise for that. And, and also when using it, you see how practical it is. You know that this is playing directly from your PlayStation. You're not worried about game saves or anything. You're not worried about the app on your phone. This is a dedicated device for it. Now, does it do it well? That's the next question. And it does. Um, it looks really gorgeous while you're playing on screen. The other quality from the speakers are really nice, crisp and clear. So again, that is really good. And I think a lot of people like that. Now you will have, you, you may notice some, some jumps or some slowdowns in terms of use case. That depends on your wireless connection in terms of your Wi-Fi setup and also your internet provider. PlayStation recommends 50 megabits or up. I say honestly, you need to have at least 100 megabits or up, just in general. Just because you're connecting your PlayStation to the web, this is also connected as well. Connected to your Wi-Fi, you wanna make sure that everything's at the best possible speeds or else you're gonna notice that. So I would not recommend this for fast-paced shooters, online gaming, things like that where you do competitive gaming. This is more for your you know, single player games and also just games that you're gonna have some fun with and not take too seriously in terms of competitive nature. So that part, I, will, I wouldn't give it to. Now, you're gonna ask, but I have my backbone controller, I have my you know, Razer Kishi, I can connect my smartphone, why do I need this? Well, you look at the screen setup and you look at how, how, how it looks, right? You have to do a lot of the PlayStation um, navigating through using the touchscreen on your, on your smartphone. Plus, your smartphone is now fully used for your gaming session, which means you get a phone call in, you get text messages, you try to answer stuff, you're jumping in and out of the game session. Meanwhile, your portal does that for you. Now, it sounds like I am just for the portal. I'm fully supporting it. I mean, I gotta say it does the job that it's supposed to do. And, you know, being able to watch, you know, JJK on my TV downstairs while my PlayStation is upstairs and then game and, you know, being able to hang out with my wife while she's watching whatever she wants to watch and I can still jump in and do some gaming is a fun thing to do. And also it clearly shows that I am gaming. I'm showing her this is, this is what I'm doing. So to me, that makes sense. Now, I'm not going to say that this device is for everyone because it truly is not. Uh, there are alternatives to doing the same thing for, for PlayStation fans, like using your smartphone, like, like using your iPad, that are technically cheaper because you already own those as well, compared to spending $199 for this. But I have to tell you though, if you're going to get it, you're definitely going to enjoy the PlayStation Portal. It is one of those things that I did not expect to, to admit. And my buddy CJ Kid, we had a huge argument about this. And um, yeah, I, I think I kind of like, I like where this device is going. I do want to see it evolve from just this remote play. I want to see something that I can take with me on the go and actually play uh, remotely away from my home. Uh, I would love to see a brand new PSP, something like that, that allows on the go gaming, uh, whether it's within the hardware itself or streaming, some of those options, or even this being able to just stream externally. Like, you know, hey, if I'm traveling, I can connect to my hotel Wi-Fi and play on my PlayStation. I think even the, if, if, the, if the PlayStation portal had the ability to access remotely, um, as long as you had a good internet connection from your hotel room, or, you know, it's the holiday season, you're going to family, right? You're going to your grandparents' place or your parents' place, and you've already set them up with fast internet. This would have been great to take with me on the road. And I think that's where my biggest gripe with, with the PlayStation portal, portal is. But honestly, it's solid. Is it better than using your smartphone? Yes, when you're playing PlayStation games, it definitely is. Is it worth picking up in, that, in terms of that as a replacement? No, it's not. But if you fit any of the scenarios I mentioned, I think the portal is right for you. So if you guys have any questions or any comments about this device, let me know. Or if you want to pick up any of the stuff you've seen here, leave your thoughts down below. Use our links in the bio and always enjoy your entertainment.